Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, in today's, we're gonna be looking at a new material. Only recently have we actually started reviewing engineering resins for this channel. Um, materials with really high heat resilience, uh, flexibles and other such things like that. Um, we really didn't intend on reviewing any tough resins because they're typically pretty generic. But when we reached out to Mac4D and they sent us over a big box of resin to try, uh, this one in particular made a really big impression. A huge shout out and thank you to Mark over at Mac4D for sending us over all of these resins to try. We're not going to go into detail as to, you know, what those other resins are today. Um, you'll just have to get subscribed to find out. I guess to start, these resins were sent over to try on the Asiga Max X35 that we're currently working with, uh, along with Asiga. Uh, using specific resin profiles. However, these materials are not limited to a high-end Asiga machine, DLP machines in general. Um, they are compatible with MSLA as well. 385 and 405 nanometer, so regardless of which machine you have, you should be able to use these materials. So this resin here is called Tyco T. According to Mac4D, uh, on the information page anyway, verbatim, this resin has a high proportion of fillers and represents the hardest material within our range for industrial applications. Tyco T excels at precise industrial components that are required to withstand high loads. The finished parts have a smooth matte surface and are highly heat and chemical resistant. For example, you may use this resin for short run uh, injection molds and inserts directly off the printer heat resistant and fluid exposed components, such as a piece of pipe or something like that, uh, jigs and fixtures, and aerodynamic test models, because this resin simulates the stiffness of glass and fiber filled thermoplastics. Okay, that was a big mouthful, but that's just what they have on their marketing. So all that said, it seems like this is some pretty serious stuff and is not your typical tough resin for printing your Warhammer armies or something. Um, we've been printing with this stuff for a few days on the Asiga and the Mars 3 so that we have a good comparison in between the two. Now we wanted to try to stay on theme with the whole aerodynamic thing. So we printed uh, this propeller, like what you might see on a drone, for example, uh, and this other one from, I think it's from like a water turbine or something like that. Um, now the parts, these were printed on the Mars 3. This is not gonna fit on a Sega, just so you know. Um, the Mars 3 turned out great at about three and a quarter seconds per layer, 30 second base, with pretty much standard tough resin settings on the rest. Um, but I'm still working on fine tuning the exposures, so make sure you check Mac4D website uh, in the near future if you're interested in getting this resin. Washing this material can be a little bit difficult. The resin doesn't dissolve away as easily as others. It does break down in the alcohol as it should, but not very easily. The finish on the surface of the parts is matte, as advertised, and actually kind of appears powdery, but, uh, but it actually isn't. It's just a surface thing. It kind of reminds me of bone, actually. You can put the prints in water or glycerin or a much higher end cure unit that has like nitrogen flooding area uh, during the UV cure. Uh, to make sure that this, this finish is a little bit nicer. Uh, I didn't have the right size container or enough glycerin to put this in anyway, so we kind of forego that. Um, but it works just fine all the same. This resin definitely is very tough, but not in a brittle way. It's not hard. It has just the right amount of flexibility um, on this type of model anyway, that if you give it a little bit of a bend, it's not going to snap easily. My channel really isn't designed or intended for testing resins and their toughness like this. Um, if you're really interested in kind of, you know, how tough it is relative to others, maybe you throw Sand Ladder a message and maybe he's willing to put it to the test. But on this channel, we will be testing it in some other ways. So let's do the RTV mold first. The RTV takes a much longer time to set up. So let's just get that rolling. Um, I have printed all of our weights in Prusa Tough Resins, which is sadly not available anymore. And I've also printed the widow weight in Tyco T on the Asiga. I know that the Prusa stuff works really well with RTV, so we're gonna start with that one, and I'm gonna take a little bit off and put it on this Tyco T test plate, so that if there is a reaction, I'm not losing a whole lot of material, I still get a mold out of it, and everything should be good. 
So we're going to take a mold of this scorpion first because I don't need two spiders, I just need the one. And if the Tycho T works, then I will be able to just take a mold of that. Uh, Tyco T is in fact resistant to RTV. The test plate turned out absolutely flawless. No sign of stickiness at all. Unfortunately, uh, when it came time to make the mold of the Tyco T spider, I dropped it and it broke and I lost a bunch of pieces of the legs. So that didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, thankfully though, I had another spider ready on hand so there was no waste and I did manage to get a mold in the end. And we still have the Tycho T test plate, which turned out great. So confirmed that Tycho T is RTV safe. Moving on, I took a vulcanized rubber mold of this model here, which is just a pretty standard ring, and it works flawlessly. No warping, absolutely perfect. Uh, I can confirm that this is heat resistant up to 350 Fahrenheit. I expect this will go much higher but uh, I'm really not equipped to figure that out. So confirmed, this resin is vulcanizer safe. So on to the next test for just overall like durability. In an email with Mark, I was told that you can actually polish this resin with pumice, is what he said. Now pumice, in my experience, is equivalent approximately to 400 grit, um, up to 1200, depending on size. Pumice is pretty diverse. Um, now, there's nothing super special about that. You can sand any resin with 600 grit sandpaper and it's probably going to turn out just fine. As a matter of fact, I go down to 400 grit uh, and sand it wet uh, a lot of my other models just to smooth out little areas with supports and I've always had perfect results. So I sanded this propeller blade with sandpaper and it came out exactly as I would hope <laughs> from sanding. Uh, it wasn't anything too amazing, but it turned out great. Now, I wanted to take this a step further and see how well I could actually polish this on a machine polisher. So I took it over to my polishing machine and I polished it with triple E compound on a muslin buff wheel, and it actually polished up remarkably well. Again, good to know, and I suspect very, very relevant to the uh, aerodynamic uh, model range thing that <laughs> this resin was uh, marketed towards. The next test that Mark brought to my attention was that this stuff is so tough, it should be able to take machining. It should handle drilling and tap and die exceptionally well. So on the propeller, again, I know I abused this one quite a lot. Um, I resized the hole in the middle to, I think it was just slightly less than quarter inch. So probably like five mil, give or take. Um, and it handled it flawlessly. I just used a standard metal cutting drill bit. Didn't use any lubrication. It just like butter, went through perfectly. And then taking it a step further, I used this old two flute tap, a quarter inch, 20 thread, that we just had kicking around uh, in my toolbox. And again, I just tapped it. Now, this is an odd shape to try to tap. Um, you can see I really struggled with putting this in the vise. I'm just trying to use the supports. Um, with tapping, you have to make sure that you go straight as down as possible. And I did as best as I could, but again, this is just a test, so no big deal. Um, and it actually worked remarkably well. I did have a little bit of chipping around the corners when I accidentally bottomed out the tap, uh, as in like it was threaded on too tightly. But had I not done that, I doubt it would have chipped. It would have been just fine. 
Um, on the note though of trying to tap or drill oddly shaped objects like this or this or whatever, um, this would be a prime use for this resin. Printing a jig that can hold it and is perfectly flat, designed around the model that you've already made, that sounds like a pretty compelling use for me. So all of these tests were incredibly successful, um, but what did I not like about Tycho T? Um, the first thing is the viscosity is incredibly high. It's basically resin pudding. Um, this is necessary though because of, well, if you want these properties, you gotta have some kind of filler in there. And as they said in the marketing, this is like the highest filler they could possibly add to this resin. So it's not gonna go away, but it was a bit of a hassle. To On the note of the viscosity, um, it did really make washing rather difficult. Uh, I would just kind of stuck these in a bath of ethyl alcohol, 95%. And if it just sits there, it does nothing. Like it, it does break down, but I didn't want to just let them soak for hours. That's not good. You will probably have to get in there and scrub them with a toothbrush because to clear all this stuff away uh, is going to require a bit more agitation than just kind of swishing them around. However, if you're already in the habit of using a toothbrush to clean your resin anyway, then this probably won't be a big deal. Uh, the last thing is that it is a little bit pricey. Now looking at what you can do with this, it could be considered a bargain depending on your application, like making aerodynamic parts or, you know, things that have to withstand a lot of pressure, heat, chemical resistance, whatever. Um, again, this resin is not designed for printing Warhammer armies. It is an engineered tough resin. So cost is a completely arbitrary thing based on your application. And I guess the last thing that kind of bugged me uh, was that it's only available in one color, this ivory white color. Um, now, I mean, that can be fixed, I'm pretty sure. Enough people like this stuff, I'm sure they would happily make more colors. So I really enjoyed this experience uh, using Tyco T from Mac 4D. I really liked it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be putting this to good use. I have a number of tools that I would like to print in a material that I know is going to be able to withstand. Um, not like hammers or anything crazy, but you know, jigs come in handy, uh, especially with some of the odd jewelry that we make. We need to design tools that can hold them so I can actually work on them easily. And finding another resin that is RTV safe on the market that is half the price of the only other RTV safe resin that I'm aware of is pretty good in my books. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.